Hi guys, welcome back to Ajivit channel. So today we will be continuing our veterinary surgery and radiology series. So this is the third part of wombs. So please subscribe this channel and hit the bell button for more updates. So here we will be discussing about the treatment of wounds and the complications of wounds. So we are all familiar with the healing of a wound and the factors responsible for healing and the types of wounds and the regeneration capacity of wounds. So the next important portion is the treatment of wounds. So we'll be moving to the treatment of wounds. So in case of contusions and bruises, first we'll be treating with cold and astringent applications. So it is actually to minimize the extravasations. Then onwards, we will be keeping the ice packs and all. That is about uh, 15 minutes and we will be taking an interval of 15 minutes and then we will be continuing it. From second day onwards, we will be applying some formulations and topical applications of ointments containing the heparin and anticoagulants, so IDEX, which will be helping to reabsorb the extravasations. So next is hematomas. Actually, very small hematomas will get absorbed. And otherwise, we have to cut open it and we have to drain the fluid and we have to then stitch it. The first step in the treatment of open wounds is of controlled bleeding. So aseptic incised wounds. So in case of aseptic incised wounds, which are fresh and non-infected wounds, we will be suturing them and we will be bringing about healing by first intention. So next is actually the very important one that is the contaminated and infected wounds, that is the septic wounds. First of all, we need to control the bleeding. That is, if at, all, if at all any vessels are there, we have to ligate it and the bleeding should be controlled. Next is actually cleaning of the wound. Before cleaning of the wound, the hair around the wound should be clipped so that no hair will fall onto the wound. Next, we will be irrigating with mild non-retent aseptic lotion for removing the dirt and dead tissue. We can use perchloride of mercury lotion or aclifavin lotion or usual lotions are mainly used. Also, we can use hypertonic saline solution that is 5 to 10 percentage of NaCl in water. So, it will be good for removing dead cell and the discharges. So, next is actually control of infection. That is after the irrigation of the wound, it is covered with a moist antiseptic pad or antiseptic powder or ointment to prevent the further infection. So moist antiseptic pad is prepared by soaking cotton wool in the antiseptic solution. We are familiar with this procedures and all. So antiseptic powders commonly used are bosic acid powder, UPAD powders, BIP, sulfanilamide powders, etc. So the main ointments commonly used are boic acid ointment, penicillin ointment, streptomycin ointment, chloromycin ointment, taramycin ointment, etc. So these have antibacterial action also. So application of very strong antiseptic to a wound should be avoided as it will destroy the granulation tissue and the delay healing and it will decrease the wound healing. So do not use very powerful antiseptics but use mild powerful antiseptics. Next is providing the drainage. You can use sterilized gauze or any capillary tubes or perforated tubes can be used. So there is exudation and discharge. Before the suturing we have to clean it properly and we have to drain it properly. We have to drain the fluid and all by using sterilized gauze. Next is immobilizing a wounded area. So proper immobilization is a very important thing in case of wound healing and all. So healing is delayed if at all immobilization is not given properly. That will lead to proud flesh or exuberant granulation. So these are mainly seen in the uh, wounds that are affected in the knee and hock region. So the excess growth of granulation tissue protruding through the wound should be suppressed for proper healing to take place. Sometimes you can adjust it by pressure and all. Pressure bandages or copper sulfate or potassium permanganate can be put over the or applied over the area. So next is treatment of punctured wounds. Actually, they are not sutured because it contains many foreign material and bacteria deep into it. So the narrow external opening may be enlarged to provide much more drainage. So antibiotics are inserted into those area and also parenterally we will be giving antibiotics. So the treatment of avulsion of hoof and avulsion of horn, if at all the bleeding is severe we can use a tourniquet and then wound is cleaned with antiseptic lotion like perchloride of mercury 
placing a moist antiseptic pad soaked in the lotion and the bandage is applied on the avulsed area so the bandage is removed next day and afterward the wound is dressed with only dressing ointments and these are repeated day by day after a few days the growth of thin layer of horn tissue can be recognized the horny tissue completes within like a month so next is the complication of wounds so if at all the wounds are not seen through properly or they are not treated properly that will lead to many complications so we can discuss them so the first one is hemorrhage so if at all the wound is not treated properly that will lead to hemorrhage excessive hemorrhage means excessive fluid loss excessive blood loss that can lead to hypovolemic shock and that can even lead to death so next is traumatic neuralgia that is the hyperesthesia along the course of a nerve next is traumatic emphysema that is actually whenever traumatic wounds of the respiratory tracts are seen air is trapped in tissue spaces so that will lead to traumatic emphysema next is venous thrombosis or the emboli so in major vessels sometimes thrombi will be there or emboli will be there that can even lead to death so traumatic fever will be there erysipelas that is infection due to uh, streptococcus and erysipelotrix and all so mainly erythema will be there that is due to streptococcus next is septicemia and pyemia that is due to mainly septicemic bacteria and all and pus producing organism for profound depression will be there next is gangrenous septicemia that is due to gas gangrene that is very hot and painful edematous swelling around the wound later it will turn to putrefactive changes and the subnormal temperatures and toxemia will be very much there so next is tetanus that is clostridium tetanus mainly found in the anaerobic conditions so in deep punctured wounds the chance of clostridium tetanus is very high so we should always go for tetanus topoid injection other infections are like actinomycosis actinobacillus black water which will be causing gangrenous mastitis uh, myositis and all so next is adhesions that is open wounds involving muscles and tendons adhesions may develop during the healing procedures so thank you guys